Thank you very much. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is aging. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about myself or my personal aging experience, of course. I'm talking about population aging, um, the shift from young people to older people, as it is happening in many countries around the world, and in particular uh, here in Japan. Now, this is kind of a special audience for this topic today, I guess. Uh, in Japan, as you may know, more than 26% of the population are already aged 65 and older, and almost 50% are aged 50 and older. Now, probably a very exceptional audience um, here today, um, as you are in the society, maybe in the minority, but you're the majority here today. But I hope still that this will be an interesting and useful topic for you. Now, um, let me start by saying that a shift in perspective can help. Very often when we talk about the aging society, we talk very negatively about it. We talk about the demographic crisis, we talk about the age wave or age tsunami, it's, as it's sometimes called. Usually we talk about it as a problem. I prefer to have a different perspective and look at it as an opportunity, as something positive. Um, and that's the first slide uh, that I would like to show here, um, if you can turn them off uh, again, which kind of summarizes this business opportunity in one single chart, um, which is this one, yes. I call this uh, Japan's silver market phenomenon. Now here we're looking at one particular industry, it's disposable diapers. Obviously, with an aging population and a shrinking population as well, this industry was faced with a threat of a declining market. But if you look at this chart, you can see actually that the domestic market total is actually increasing. Now that's curious. But if you look at the two lines below that, you can see why this is the case. We actually have two different market segments. One is actually in decline, which is the market segment for diapers, for babies, infants, as was expected because we have fewer of them in the population here in this country. But there's another one, a new market, diapers for older people due to uh, a medical chronic condition. And that's a new market segment that has been developed and it's been growing very, very fast. And in 2008, these two curves intersected. And since then, they're selling more diapers for older people in Japan than for infants or babies. Now, this is not in unit terms, in the actual number of diapers. It's in terms of value, in terms of revenue. But this clearly shows that there's a shift in market segments from young consumers to older consumers. And now, this is maybe an example that doesn't resonate so much with this audience here in this room. But if you look at data, for example, from convenience stores in Japan, you can see that the average age of those patronizing convenience stores in Japan, for example, is on the increase. Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea also see a strong increase in the average age of the, of the, of the customers patronizing the premises. Um, because we have more older people coming um, out there, going out there and enjoying themselves there, um, but also because they're taking maybe their grandchildren there and things like that. So it's happening across all industries, essentially. And that's what I call the silver market phenomenon. Now, what is very curious is, I think there are lots of opportunities now out there to do something. And I often talk to business executives. I've been doing this for, for more than 10 years now. When I ask managers, I say, what, what do you think about demographic change? Might this be a business opportunity? And then they say, yes, I think there's a big opportunity out there. So, oh, wow, well, this is great. So what do you do? I said, oh, no, us, we're not really there yet. We're not ready for this yet. Or we're in a different industry. We're doing B2B. We're not on the consumer segment or something like that. They give me all kinds of excuses, which is kind of curious. And so I'm wondering, um, and this is the next slide, um, where is actually the action? What is, what is happening? It seems that everyone's very much aware of an aging population, of the demographic shift. They understand that much. They also seem to be, up to, to a certain degree, people seem to understand that there are business implications out there. But they don't really take concrete business action. I mean, there are some exceptions out there, but most companies that I've talked to are not very proactive in this segment. This is very curious. If you think about management or business administration in general, then we know that usually we have to make decisions under high uncertainty. A lot of things we don't understand, and we don't know how to deal with. But for demographic changes, this is one of the very few things that we have a very clear idea about. We have very good projections into the future, 50 years ahead, even 100 years ahead. We have very accurate data. So this is really curious. And I started to do some more research to try to find out what's going on here. 
And this is some data um, from a survey of companies here in Japan. But I asked the question that I've often asked executives, so do you think there's a business opportunity with the uh, silver market out there uh, in the future? And you can say, a vast, vast the majority of the respondents say, yes, we do think there's an opportunity out there. Um, but then if you ask them, um, do you see an opportunity for your company, then the number of people who respond in the affirmative uh, is uh, all of a sudden a lot lower. Um, and I have uh, termed this uh, difference in this kind of perspective, again, uh, as the difference between a first-person and a third-person opportunity. Now, what does that mean? Well, a first-person opportunity is an opportunity for yourself or maybe for your own business. A third-person opportunity is an opportunity out there for someone else. Um, it could be a competitor, it could be another company, another industry, possibly. So it seems that the perspective that people are taking here is, yes, there is an opportunity out there, but it's not there for me, it's for someone else. Now, what is the result of this? Well, the result of this is that nothing much is happening in the space of, of business and aging. Um, as you can see here, for example, company, most companies don't do market research among older people. So we don't have any data about consumer behavior of older people. We think maybe we know what they want, but maybe we don't really understand because we don't do our homework, we don't do our research. And also, we don't um, really develop any products for this particular target segment. That is by now already basically the majority, and it's growing very, very rapidly. So now that's, of course, uh, quite concerning. And the big question is, why is that the case? Why is there this difference between the perspective of a first-person opportunity versus a third-person opportunity? And I'd argue it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of perception. If you look at this chart, and this shows um, an image from an advertising campaign by Dove that was run a few years ago. And what do you see when you look at this picture of this um, older woman here? What do you see? And is it really your judgment call? Do you see an old wrinkled face? Or do you see just a wonderful smile of a woman, beautiful woman, that is really, really happy? It's your choice, right? So maybe it's our perspective and our perception of what aging is that makes us uh, not really making the right judgment about whether this is positive or negative. Or in other words, from a business perspective, we don't really understand is population aging a threat, something negative, or possibly an opportunity to do more business. And based on the research that I've done with a colleague of mine, Professor Ken Matsuno at Babson College in the US, we think we found at least one answer to this. And the answer to this is called ambivalence. You may have heard of this, and of course we use the word ambivalent and ambivalence in our daily lives. Ambivalence is the state of having simultaneous, sometimes conflicting feelings towards something, like feeling happy and sad at the same time. We think that a lot of executives are very ambivalent about population aging. It's a threat, no, it's an opportunity, Oh, it's a threat and an opportunity maybe at the same time. And when you get into this mindset of thinking about something that is both a threat and an opportunity at the same time, you become really ambivalent. You're not sure anymore what it really is. And then you get stuck. You get paralyzed. And this is why a lot of businesses get caught in inaction. They don't respond to demographic change, to population aging, by proactively targeting the market. That's when you see them not doing any marketing research, not doing any product development, and not properly targeting this market segment. Um, so ambivalence is really the reason for this. So again, the big question is, you're facing this big mega change, mega trend in your environment, which is population aging. You have to make a decision about responding. And again, most of the time, managers understand demographic change. They know the data, and it's in the media all the time. But they're not really sure what it means exactly for their business, and they're not really ready to respond properly to it in terms of their strategies. And that's what's, what's really missing, even though there are some exceptions, and I have a few examples in a minute for you. But also, interestingly, um, one of the things I've, I found from this research was that I had a very simple perspective by thinking, well, if there's more older people, we just pr produce more products and services for older people, and that's our new target segment, the silver market. But I found from this research, actually, there's other strategies as well. 
some of the companies that I've talked to decided to target even younger customers that they, ha that they had already been targeting. That was an educational company that I talked to that was helping uh, senior high school students. Now they're also including junior high school students to have a broader customer base, even though overall it's shrinking. Or moving deeper, providing more value added for every ser service, or so sometimes bundling products and services together to get more of a margin per sale um, because they cannot sell as many products as, as, as anymore because there's fewer customers around. We're also um, uh, moving out, which is going global. Of course, we know all the big Japanese companies are already internationally active, but a lot of the small and medium-sized companies are purely domestic. But demographic change and the shrinking of the population in Japan make them think about taking, changing their perspective and not just look at Japan, but also look at overseas markets and go global. Now here are just a few examples of the type of products that have been developed. Maybe you've encountered Paro, the little robot um, 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 up there on the uh, left-hand side of the panel. Or you've seen the Raku Raku phone, um, which went through different generations. The old version looked um, pretty, pretty blunt, but there's a Raku Raku smartphone out there now as well. If you can have the next, uh, yes, this one. Or luxury cars. Um, and the Nintendo Wii, which is um, a transgenerational product. So it's not just a product that is made for older people. It's a product that can be used by anyone, regardless of age, and can bring different generations together. It's transgenerational, which is very interesting. Now, I need to add one more thing. When I say silver market, I'm actually misspeaking. The silver market is not one homogeneous market segment. Older people are very diverse. They have different needs and wants, different financial statuses, health conditions, and they have a lot of experience. They've been consuming and using products for decades, so they really want value for their money. So we shouldn't see them as a homogeneous market segment. But again, this is one of the wrong perspectives a lot of companies are taking when they look at older people. Oh, they're all the same. They don't use technology anymore. Lots of stereotypes and preconceptions out there that I think we need to get rid of. Because things are changing. It's a cohort thing. It's a generational thing. Older people today are very different from older people before. This is a friend of mine, an Italian. We used to work together in China. At his 55th birthday earlier this year, we had a chat. And he said, you know, in former times, people had an expectation. At some point, my, my parents are going to pass on their wealth to me, and I can use that money and do something for myself. Because older people tend to be thrifty, and then they pass on everything to their children. But then he said, last time he went back home to Italy, he found that this was a completely different picture. His mother enjoying herself, and his father as well. Well, actually, this is not quite true. Um, these are not his parents. But what he said when he went back home to Italy, he found his parents had just bought a 30,000 um, euro uh, worth of a, a, a Maserati in the, in, 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 that he found in the garage. Um, so they're spending all the money. He came to realize that, you know, this is a different generation. They want to have fun by themselves. They're not going to pass on the money to him. In, in, um, in academia, we call this a cohort effect. Different generations are different from, from former ones. And our image of older people is changing as well. If you think about rock stars, are these folks old? Yes and no, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's your judgment call. Um, so there's a lot of change. Also, in terms of pers perspectives, we've talked now a lot about consumers. But older people also are consumers at the same time as their older employees. And that's another side of the, the coin that we need to look at from a different perspective. The productivity of older workers. A lot of the time we're saying older people just cost more money, they're not productive anymore. Again, very often, very negative views. But they're two sides of the same coin. And we actually need more older people on product development um, uh, teams, advertising teams, and so, on, and so on, to understand the needs of the customers of the future, of the silver market. So. Um, Finally, also, one more important point that I just want to highlight quickly. I think we should also think about the aging society in terms of um, corporate social responsibility. Some older people are quite affluent. If you think about the baby boom generation in Japan right now, they own a lot of assets, they have a lot of money, and they want to spend it. But what, what about the future? We know a lot of people are in uh, non-regular employment in Japan, lots of fritas out there, etc. People won't have maybe as much money in the future when they're old. Even as we speak today, 
around 20% of those people aged 65 and older in Japan live in poverty. That's relative poverty, not absolute poverty. But that's something to consider as well. Yet another perspective on the server market. So in order to wrap up, um, we need to take a new and fresh perspective on age and aging and older people and who they are, what they want, and how we target them, of course, as businesses. And we really need to change our preconceptions that we very often have. We don't want to be ageist, of course, but we very often find we are more ageist than we may think. And that's something really to think about and it may, that we may want to change so that we can really leverage the potential of the server market. And this is my last slide now where I'm arguing that Japan also needs to change its perspective. In the 1980s, we were talking about Japan as number one, leading the world in terms of economic development and management ideas. And this is long gone. But now Japan is number one in terms of population aging, with the most aged population in the whole world. But so far, we've looked at it in a very negative way. This is Japan's opportunity to change its perception and its perspective to move on and say, we will have a new Japan as number one in terms of solutions, creative, innovative solutions for an aging society that can also be used in other countries that also will be, start, will be aging in the future. Thank you very much.